there's no particular all encompassing name for this, this stretch here. It's just the Murray Coast. You kind of have to describe it. You usually go in between Aberdeen and Inverness. Right on the North Sea. They're all very similar, all these little villages here. When I was little, you could tell which little town the people were from just by their accent. That's kind of lost now. I'm Matthew David Flett, and this is Port Noki. The first flat was uh, a Norse gale, a Hebridean gale, and that was in 1150. We came here in about the 1750s. The local laird hired a crew to man a fishing boat. It was uh, a father and his three sons. Well, between them, and they had 28 children. So by the time 1900 rolled around, half the village was flats. The, the Flett family story is fishermen, all the way back to 1150. If you think of like uh, the West Coast and like clans and things like that, we were never part of that. The sea was our thing we looked at. It was never the land. It's not our business. <laughs> we were always fishermen. We were always too busy fishing. It was the 60s when they first started drilling in the North Sea. My dad, he's been in the oil and gas industry since the 70s. Like, he could make tens of pounds here in a week. Went to that job, hundreds of pounds for his week. So it's, what are you gonna do? <laughs> You're gonna do that. But uh, in doing that, he set himself up for a life where he'd be away for months on end, working you know, 50, 60 hours a week maybe getting five, six hours of sleep at night. It's a great opportunity. If you're willing to go and do the job. There's a lot of people around here, and I'm sure in other heavy industrial places. The environment, the work environment, and the industry and the work broke families effectively. The amount of alcoholics and things I know through it is uh, was pretty incredible. My dad's notorious. He's uh, a famous alcoholic. Let's just say that he sacrificed. <coughs> me. He sacrificed himself for our well-being. Um, like many people around here, I was unemployed at that point in time. So you can see how appealing that would have been. I actually worked in a fabrication yard. We used to make what you call a riser pipe. These would go into the seabed, just straight down like that, dangling from the rig. You'd get these huge pipes dangling down and that's where the drill pipe would actually go. You're never thanked for working for a big company. As well as for some of the environmental considerations. And came a point where I had to leave it because oh, I was very much on the brink of a mental breakdown, very, very close to it. And if it was not for the support of people around me, I might not be here today. So it's that simple. Oil and gas is intrinsic to this part of the country. The heron industry was so big here, we fished the heron dry out there guys and little steam drifters and little clipper boats and things outfished the fisheries out there and you know they decimate them. The 
fishing industry petered out just as the oil was coming in. You know, it might yet happen like Yorkshire after the coal mines closed. You know, desolate, very poor. I think it will really depend on whether renewable jobs can replace the oil and gas jobs. The time I learned to be a professional engineer and, and work at that for so many years gave me great uh, abilities with my hands to create things. A lot of the local materials will come from literally the shoreline just below us. You get all sorts of things washed up. Um, that's a bit of, bit of whiskey bar right there. I would like pieces of my work to sort of speak for themselves. You can feel it's natural. If you dropped it in a woody path somewhere 50, 60 years down the line, it'll be gone. There'll be nothing left of it. It's just gone. Yeah, I like that. It's very much just an outlook on life that I kind of like the, the thought that we're all just here passing through. never own any, it's just used for a while. Just custodians of the things that we, we come in contact with.